As discussed in companion videos in this guided tour series, Evolver can optimize linear programming models with its new LP algorithm, and it can solve specialized types of optimization models with its non-recipe solving methods. This video will illustrate two other types of models that Evolver can solve, those with smooth nonlinearities and those with non-smooth features. Admittedly, unless you have a solid background in optimization, you might not even recognize whether your model is linear, nonlinear, or non-smooth. Essentially, linear models are fairly easy, and nonlinear and non-smooth models can be very difficult for any optimization software, depending on their size and complexity. However, Evolver makes the optimization as simple as possible for you, the user, by providing automatic settings on how it will try to optimize your model. Your task is to set up the model by providing the model logic with Excel formulas and the model definition for optimization. Then you can let Evolver perform the optimization. A typical smooth nonlinear model is the portfolio selection model shown here. An investor wants to invest a certain amount of money in three stocks with uncertain returns. There are two competing goals. First, the investor wants a large expected portfolio return, but second, the investor wants a small level of risk, as measured by the variance of the portfolio return. Because these goals are incompatible, the typical way to model this is to put a lower bound on the required expected portfolio return and then minimize the portfolio variance. The adjustable cells are the portfolio weights in row 14. They must be non-negative and they must sum to 100%, as they do in this initial solution. It might not be obvious why this model is nonlinear. The reason is the variance formula in cell C20. The function used in this cell is actually Excel's mmult, matrix multiplication, array function, but this is simply a quick way to enter a long formula involving a sum of squares and cross products of the adjustable cells. These squares and cross products make the model nonlinear. The model definition is shown here. Note that the budget solving method is used. This ensures that the adjustable cells will always sum to their current sum 100%. The one constraint is on the required expected return. Although you could experiment with the optimization settings from the Evolver Settings button, there is no real reason to do so. In particular, you can keep the automatic engine setting, which lets Evolver choose the algorithm that it thinks will work best. You don't even need to realize that this model is nonlinear. You can let Evolver detect this automatically and determine the best way to deal with it. Now I will optimize. Actually, Evolver finds the optimal solution very quickly, but then it runs for a few more seconds to make sure that no further progress is being made. This is typical for nonlinear models. As you can see, the optimal solution is to invest half of the money in each of stocks 1 and 3. Note that the solution that minimizes the portfolio variance also minimizes the portfolio standard deviation, a summary measure that is easier to interpret. The portfolio model is nonlinear, but at least it is smooth. Technically, this means that its objective function and constraint functions have no jump discontinuities and they have continuous derivatives. If you saw graphs of them, they would either be straight lines or smooth curves. In contrast, there are many interesting optimization models that are non-smooth. These present a challenge for any optimization software. However, the theory behind non-smooth optimization has progressed, and there are now algorithms built into Evolver 6.0 that can successfully solve many non-smooth models. The model you see here is a model for producing seven models of lawnmowers in three machine centers over a four-week period. The company has four goals, and rather than modeling these goals as constraints, there are penalties for not meeting the goals. 
The objective is to minimize the total of the penalties in cell M13. The adjustable cells are the weekly production levels in the boxed-in range. Here are the goals and why they make the model non-smooth. The company has pickups that are already promised in week one. These promises are listed in row three. The shortages from these promises are found in row 18 with if functions. The penalty for each shortage is 50 in cell M4. As week one production levels increase, the shortages decrease linearly but then level off to zero. This is always a sign of a non-smooth model. In fact, if functions involving the adjustable cells are always a sure sign of a non-smooth model. The second goal is that the company wants to limit the number of model changeovers from week to week. To implement this goal, it calculates the number of models produced at positive levels each week with count if functions in column J. To keep these numbers low, there is a penalty of 200 in cell M3 times the total in column J. Again, the count if functions make the model non-smooth. The third goal is that the company wants to smooth production levels in the three machine centers, so it calculates the average number of hours needed per week in the three centers in the range I-21 to I-23, and then it uses the absolute value function, ABS, to calculate the deviations from the hourly targets in rows 26 to 28. These are multiplied by 1 in cell M5 to get the corresponding penalty. Once more, the ABS, or absolute value functions, lead to a non-smooth model. Finally, the fourth goal is that there is a penalty for being above or below the total forecasts in row 4. ABS, absolute value functions, are used in row 17 to find the deviations between the total production and total forecasts. And the sum of these is multiplied by 10 in cell M6 to calculate the corresponding penalty. In short, this is a very difficult model to optimize because of the high degree of non-smoothness. But if you are willing to wait a while, Evolver can find an optimal or near-optimal solution. Here is the model definition. There are no constraints, and the adjustable cells are integers. The bounds 0 and 150 should suffice, but you can experiment with the upper bound if you like. Now I will optimize. As you can see, it is making quick progress, but then it levels off. Again, you have to be patient on these difficult models. It finally quit. That took about a minute. As you can see, this solution meets the pickup demand in week one, and it meets the total demand exactly. Note that to meet the pickup demand in week one, all seven models are produced in week one, and this contributes a lot to the model changeover penalty. However, only a few models are produced after week one. Finally, the hours used each week in the three machine centers, shown in rows 21 to 23, are quite level, which keeps the penalty for smooth production low. The stopping condition for this optimization was not the default stopping condition, where the algorithm quits when there is no substantial improvement after 20,000 consecutive trials. The 20,000 was changed to 5,000 here to speed up the optimization. 
If 20,000 is used instead, again starting from the same solution as before, the solution improves slightly. Although I won't show it here, the optimization then takes over a minute, about a minute and a half, of computing time, and the total penalty decreases slightly. It is very possible that even this improved solution is still not quite optimal. In difficult models like this one, it can take a lot of computing time to find the precise optimal solution. However, this is typically not worth the effort. A near-optimal solution usually suffices for all practical purposes. Also, note that you won't necessarily get the same solution when you optimize this model. The reason is that it uses a random seed for its genetic search algorithm, and different seeds typically lead to different solutions. This is found from the application settings, right here. The point of this video is not to intimidate you with complex mathematics and difficult modeling techniques. The point is to convince you that Evolver now has the power to solve a wide variety of difficult models. In fact, some of you may have learned in optimization courses that optimization models should not include functions such as if and abs, that is, functions that result in non-smooth models, because the optimization software cannot handle them correctly. With the algorithms in Evolver 6.0, this is no longer true. This is really good news. It means that you can model your problem in the most natural way, and Evolver will still be able to optimize it.